Good afternoon, everybody. Carter Krishnar here for the Florida Squeeze. Hope everyone is doing well on this Saturday, the last Saturday before Election Day. And early voting continues in Florida uh, as we speak. And we've got um, pretty high turnout this morning, as we did yesterday evening. And the NPA surge, which we're seeing throughout the country, um, most notably in North Carolina, where NPAs now lead or the leading uh, group in the vote composition in North Carolina. They have a plurality there. Um, more, more NPAs voting in North Carolina than Republicans or Democrats statewide. We're seeing a similar surge in Florida. And while the Democrats are not gaining in Florida, in fact, Democrats right now make up only 32.7% of the statewide vote composition, um, as opposed to 44% for the Republicans, the NPA numbers are surging. And that 44% for the Republicans is down about a percentage point from uh, Thursday at this time. So you've seen um, NPAs gain at the expense of the Democrats to a certain extent, uh, but more at the expense of the Republicans. Of course, more Republicans had voted. They were comprising a larger percentage of the vote share. So there was some concern. Uh, so, of course, there would be more uh, that they could take away from the Republicans. Now, in terms of concerns from Republican officials. I have heard uh, from Republicans this morning, uh, fairly prominent Republicans, that they're a little concerned about this because what they see is not necessarily Florida being in the margins or being in play in the presidential race. I think we can rule that out. Um, although the U.S. Senate race is tighter. Every poll has shown that it's tighter. We don't know how many Trump, Mukherjee, Powell voters there are. Um, but still, the Republicans should hold, um, Rick Scott should win that Senate seat. Can't be co uh, completely sure about that. But where the Republicans are concerned, the Republicans I've spoken to yesterday and today, is that they think several state House seats are probably moving toward the Democrats with this NPA surge, as well as um, potentially amendments three and four. And maybe that is helping to stimulate the a large NPA turnout, the run on the polls we've seen from NPAs, which have taken NPAs from about 19% of the statewide vote earlier in the week to 23.5%, um, close to 23.5% um, right now. Uh, so uh, definitely some positive signs for the Democrats because we're thinking the NPA ratio in Florida this time might be 53-47, 54-46 uh, Democrat. Now, I know there are people who say out there, 70% of the NPA, 70% of the independents are turning out because they want to vote against Trump or they want to vote for abortion. So the Democrats are going to get 70% of the NPA work, vote. That never happens. If that happens, the Democrats are getting 20 or 25% of the Republicans, which we know they're not getting. So um, 53, 54, maybe 55%. Now, if we're talking 55%, then we might be talking about the Senate race being much closer, U.S. Senate race. But I'd say 53 or 54 percent is realistic. But that still puts a lot in the margins. And that, al that also probably shaves the Republican lead, which, as I calculate right now, is about um, 850,000 votes statewide. Um, it would put it down around 500 or 600,000 votes if, if the NPAs continue to vote at the same rate they're voting at now. And that split is 53-47 or 54-46 for the Democrats, or realistically, it's more like 50 de Democrats, 44 or 43 Republican, and what's left over for various independent candidates, particularly in the presidential race. That's actually the right ratio. Um, for example, North Carolina, we've talked a lot about North Carolina. North Carolina last time, Biden got 51% um, of the NPA vote. Trump got 45% of the NPA vote and the remaining 4% went to various independent candidates. So that's how um, independents vote. It's not a finite uh, 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 choice where it's 52-48 or 51-49, right? They're, they're independents who vote for independent candidates. Um, some countywide updates, Duval County, uh, the Jacksonville area, uh, Democrats have shaved a little bit off the Republican lead. It is now under 10,000 in that county. And there is an NPA surge going on there. Um, it's set up similarly to the way Duval set up in twenty uh, in in the twenty twenty three mayor's race, which Donna Deegan won. Kind of the same same breakdown at this point. So um, the Democrats very well could carry that county. Let's let's look at Hillsborough County, Tampa, uh, where the Democrats have been doing terribly in early voting. 
quite frankly. In Hillsborough County, um, the Democrats um, are still over 10,000 votes down as we record this um, uh, after uh, the 2 p.m. updates on uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time updates on Saturday uh, the 2nd. So um, that's not great, but we see an NPA surge there as well. Uh, let's look at Miami-Dade County, uh, the largest county in the state and also a very troubling county for Democrats. And um, the um, Miami-Dade numbers remain uh, bad for the Democrats, uh, up around 35,000 vote margin, uh, just under 35,000 vote margin with the Republicans in ahead. NPA numbers surging there. NPAs in Miami-Dade, I think, are probably going to vote more Republican this time from what, I, what I've been observing. Probably going to be 52-48 Republicans. So the Democrats in real trouble in Miami-Dade County. Um, really, really dire trouble in Miami-Dade uh, County. They either turn it around, I think, in the last, uh, the last uh, five hours today and then um, tomorrow during early voting, or they're going to go into Election Day with... Uh, a mountain to climb that they probably are not going to be able to scale. Broward County, our second largest county in Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale area. Uh, the numbers there uh, heavily favor the Democrats. Um, right now, it is um, the Democrats with 140,000 vote lead in the county. So think about that. If you take Broward County out of um, out of the equation, the Republican lead statewide is close to 100, uh, is close to a million votes. Uh, we're going to just check a couple other counties, Orange County, the Orlando area, where there has been a massive NPA surge and where also Democrats have outvoted their registration percentage. Democratic uh, turnout has been pretty good. Orange County right now, the Democrats have a 50,000 vote lead with the NPAs almost catching the Republicans in vote cast, votes cast. So I think Orange County is looking very good. Um, Osceola County, which we've talked a lot about, um, Democrats have about an 8,000 vote lead there. NPA numbers about to catch Republican numbers in the county. A lot of those NPAs are Puerto Rican. So the hope for Democrats is that they're voting for Harris and down, down ballot for Democrats. Um, also, very big uh, state Senate race there. Kristen Arrington is the Democratic nominee. She's trying to hold a seat uh, that has been held by the Democrats and the Republicans are contesting pretty, pretty uh, aggressively. Let's look at look. Let's look at Pinellas County. Um, where we have um, the really the, the only close congressional race uh, in the state, Whitney Fox against uh, Anna Paulina Luna, the incumbent Republican who is um, out there, who is a MTG Lauren Boebert clone. Um, right now we have a um, 16,000 vote lead for um, the Republicans in uh, Pinellas County. But as I mentioned before, that's the one place you still have a lot of Rockefeller Republicans in Florida. Some of those people will cross over. Palm Beach County, the Democrats uh, have grown their lead in the in this county now to um, over 25,000 votes, which is really critical. And the NPA numbers are, are, are growing in Palm Beach as well. Republicans have spent several million dollars in Palm Beach County alone this cycle to try and flip that county toward them. So um, what we're seeing at this moment is Democrats potentially hanging on unless there's a lot of crossover votes and a lot of the NPAs are voting for Republicans. Um, and then we'll, we'll see what happens election day. So uh, that's your update. Um, Republicans, uh, to me, privately expressing some concern about the NPA surge, the NPA run on the polls how that might impact um, amendments three and four, which are your marijuana amendment, recreational marijuana, and your um, abortion amendment in the state, as well as many, many state house races. And those state house races, um, the Republicans are on 84 state house seats. The Democrats are on 36. That gives the Republicans a super majority. If the Democrats can get to 41 seats, they can pick up five seats, um, they will get um, eliminate that super majority. Right now, there are... Uh, at least three or four seats I think will flip. And I think there are several more that could flip, uh, especially if these numbers continue to move. So we'll continue to monitor it throughout the weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, and um, we'll be back with an update soon.